739 now at iFiber One News Radio. 1020 at 1020 is the great shakeout. I'm happy to have in studio this half hour Mason County Emergency Services. It's Ross McDowell. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How, How are, are you? you? I'm great. How are you? Ah, doing good. Doing good. So a doing busy good. day today as it's the great shakeout. It's the great shakeout. Yes, indeed. You can yes, find indeed. out uh, some information. It's where you can register at shakeout.org slash Washington. And um, talk to me about this, especially on the heels of that Cascadia Rising drill that we did over the summer. Yes, we're. This is all progressive. Um, most of the stuff we're trying to do is you do. You start off with planning, and we did the planning portion of this of with the Cascadia Rising, of what's going to be um, the basically the uh, public sector. What we're going to do now. This is more or less for the private sector, saying, okay, do you have a plan? What are you going to do right when the earthquake hits? And that's our big thing right now. Having a plan, you should have a plan in, in place. Uh, obviously, your first thing to do, drop, cover, hold. Uh-huh. That's our biggie. Okay. Do that to make sure that you're safe. Because if you don't have a plan, you don't have a plan of action. Once this happens, you're going to be running around like a chicken with your head cut off. What do I do? Where do I go? I don't have any supplies. I don't have, uh, I got medical issues that I can't take care of. I don't have meds or I have something happened that you, you got pinned in somewhere. How, how do I take care of myself? How do I take care of my family? How do I take care of my pets? How do I take care of my livestock? You got all that to worry about. You don't want to do that in that split second when this happens. No, no, you so definitely pre planning is very, that. very important. So this is part of the pre planning. We're just trying to get this once again in people's face to um, do the drop cover hold and to look at their plan if they have a plan. Update your plan. Does your plan work? A lot of people come up with plans that are just unreasonable. Sure. And we want to make sure that people have reasonable plans that they can do and simple plans. Because during a time when you have an earthquake or something like this, a major event, you have to keep things very simple. If you don't, if you make it really complex, you're not going to you're not going to do it. No, not going to do it at all. I've noticed that people do take these drills more seriously over the years. Uh, But what would you say to somebody who at 1020? They hear the alert on the radio or they get a notification on their phone and they go, oh, yeah, that was today. And then they just sit right back down or don't do anything. I mean, well, you're you're going to be one of the one of the folks that is going to drain the public, um, the public services. If you're not prepared, you're going to you're going to probably be injured. You're going to probably be the one that's not going to have food. You're Mm going to probably be the one that's going to be needing other people to take care of you instead of being self-sufficient. Wow, yeah, okay. We really want people to be self-sufficient because we don't have enough firefighters and law enforcement and public works folks out there to go when we have an earthquake, a large earthquake, because they have certain things they have to do. Sure. <clears throat> you don't want to become part of the problem. You want to become part of a solution. Or you want to be at least be not a problem for those folks. Even though, yeah, I understand that's what you pay your tax dollars for, but... There's certain things that they have to do, like most of them, public works. You have to go to every single bridge we have in the county and inspect those bridges before people can drive over them. Sure. And there's something like 70-some bridges here. They only have a few, they only have so many engineers to go to those bridges and look at those bridges. So let's talk about the order <clears throat> of kind of what, where, when an event happens... You look at the bridges are important, the mm-hmm. roadways are important, the power systems are important, and these are major government services that need to be up and running as quickly as possible. That's correct. Now, you know, we'll get to, uh, you know, then you go of, to schools, then and then you go to yeah, hospitals, you know, hospitals, and, like that. and, and but, care facilities for elderly care facilities, and that going down. Um, normal homes citizen are, homes. That's low. Pretty low. Pretty low. And that's why we're encouraging three days now of, of or oh, are we at a seven week days. now? We're at seven, seven days. Seven days now. Yes. Oh, my gosh. It used to be the three day. Now we're doing seven days because, and especially in the rural areas, um, the one thing that I really love about working in the rural areas is most of the people that live in the rural areas are used to having their power out. They're used to having, uh, they're on a septic on water, that they have something where they got it generated where it still works. Mm-hmm. They also do a lot of storage of food and they do a lot of storage of water fuel they have that ready because they're like well this is every day for us sure you know the power can go out at any time and we're going to be out here we don't have 
the luxury of just walking across the street to Safeway or, you know, we live in a building where it's, you know, the water is fed by the city or the sewers by the city. So we don't have that luxury. We take care of ourselves normally and we prepare for these kind of things. Right. I have a feeling that a a little bit more of our resources are going to be going into the city where people are not used to it. Yeah. They're not ready for it. And that's the people that we really want to say, you need to plan what's going to happen. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to get certain places? Do you have your supplies? You know, uh, a lot of apartments don't have um, fireplaces. Right, right. So what are you going to do for heat? Warmth, yeah. What are you going to do for warmth? Or is there somewhere that you know you can go? Uh, We have the shelters that pop open. That might be where they would go. So we put a lot more of the shelters in the city areas that have generators and have the heat Hmm. that you would send them there because they are they're usually the ones that don't have the other options of alternative heating is there a reason why it's today at 10 20 do you know well they did it as kind of they like last year it was it was on the uh 19th so they're trying to keep it whatever day it is at that same time 10 20 at 10 20. okay it's kind of a kick thing that they they do to have people to remember sure. when to do it okay yeah You can find out more information about this at shakeout.org slash Washington. Also on the Mason County websites, you can head to the emergency services pages there and find information on things uh, here locally. You can also, uh, and I've talked with uh, folks from FEMA on the air and about their FEMA mobile app, which seems like it's a very intuitive Mm -hmm. uh, way to get some information out there as well. But you are encouraged to go and register to say that you're going to participate in this as of uh, now over 54 million people worldwide will participate Mm -hmm. in this over a million here in the great state of washington will participate in this and it's one more way that we all can uh be aware i have a question about water so people are listening and they say okay well today's the shakeout today's the day i'm going to get a week's worth of of supplies and things like that now you go you get a couple gallons of water Mm-hmm. And then you're not going to, you may not look at it for a couple of years. You know, it's sitting there. You go, oh, yeah, I got it. Well, that should be something you do. You set up certain times of the year. You can do that through your planning that uh, maybe on your birthday, a day that you'll remember, hey, that day I get rid of that water, use that water for something else, and buy new water that's going to take its place. Would you and do that sub in? Would you also encourage, I've seen a lot of these kind of things that will take junky mm-hmm, water mm-hmm. and turn it into drinkable very water. very much so that those things are great i have one of those that uh it's a little small bottle it's like a liter bottle uh-huh. a little over a liter i guess liter and a half and those things are fantastic i mean my little one i have can do 300 gallons of water in the filter wow that's a lot and, yeah you know they have them all over the place now you have a lot of them that are that are around and they actually do work okay. uh, search and rescue people have been using these for years and years okay because they're out they're not going to carry two gallons of water with them no they'll carry this and scoop out of a stream you never know what's in the stream you know sometimes stream water is very clean yeah but there's sometimes animals out there that kind of use that you yeah know, as their bathroom so <laughs> you you stream through it you use this through a filter and they're fantastic um, one thing to think about, though, if you're going to get dehydrated food, yeah, you have to add water to that oh. to make your food. So you don't only need drinking water; you need some of that water that you can use to make your food if you have the dehydrated food. I didn't even think about that one too. Yeah, that's a. That's you can go get about. those uh, MREs anywhere yeah. too, and yeah, the MREs are selling them all over the place now. All the big box stores, they got them online, all over. Seems yeah. like it's. Um, Quite a different selection of food choices. Yeah, than they're doing what some I different. Stuff. It used to be just pretty much, you know, the, you know, beef on a with a, some kind of gravy kind yeah. of thing to it. That was kind. Of, now they got a mac and cheese. They got the pasta stuff. They have stuff with spaghetti sauce kind of stuff on it. They have stews. They got all kinds. And you got a wide variety to choose from. So and they also have the ones that are gluten free. They also have the ones that are vegetarian. Oh my god! They got all those out there. I mean, they're there. Um, and it's a big business right now of making these things, yeah. but people should take advantage. And they usually have a long shelf life. Yeah, they yeah they have a very long shelf life. I just saw an ad on on the um, on the TV of one that's got a twenty five year shelf life. Oh my gosh! You know, it's like wow. I wonder how they do that. And sometimes I 
don't want to know how yeah, they do that. True, but, true. you know, it's like, wow, that's that's fantastic. That's, That's very, fantastic. very helpful. So today's the shakeout, yep. 1020. At 1020, uh, you will hear. Drop, cover, and hold. And that's, drop, what, the, hold. that's what the current are uh, saying there, drop, cover, and hold. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll have information as well on uh, on the radio here today, and we'll have uh, participation going on, 1020, uh, for the Great Washington Shakeout. You can find more at shakeout.org, and you can do slash Washington to get to a little more localized. Ross McDowell, thanks for coming on this hey, morning. Hey, thank you, and thanks for your support. Good thanks. to see you. Good to All see right. you. Yeah.